Okay, group, we've been talking about absolute value, evaluating absolute value expressions and uh, solving absolute value equations. And so let's look here at a few examples. We're going to start here with evaluating an expression with absolute value. So here we go. Let's say we've got an expression and we've got the absolute value of 4x plus 3, we'll close my absolute value symbol, minus 3 and a half, comma, if x is equal to minus 2. So I'm going to drop my minus 2. I uh, am going to substitute the minus 2 in here for x. So I've got the absolute value now of minus, I mean 4, excuse me, minus 2, 4 times minus 2, plus 3, absolute value of that expression, minus 3 and a half. So I'm, uh, I'm looking at the absolute value here, um, right here, right here. And that is a grouping. And so on the order of operations, I've got to solve within that first. And within that, I see that I'm, I've got, uh, I'm going to have to multiply this 4 times minus 2. So I'm going to keep my absolute value because i got now I've got minus 8 plus 3, close the absolute value symbol, minus 3.5. Now I'm ready to add or subtract going from left to right. And so minus 8 plus 3 gives me minus 5 minus 3 and 1 half. But this is the absolute value of minus 5. And the absolute value of minus 5 is actually just 5. So now I'm left here with 5 minus 3 and a half. I'm going to take it up here. And... So to ev finish evaluating my expression, I'm going to subtract three and a half from five. And when I do that, I'll get one and a half. So if X is minus two in the expression, the absolute value of four X plus three minus three and a half right here, then evaluating that expression is going to give me a value of one and a half. Okay, right quick, let's look at one more where we're evaluating an, an absolute value expression. And so here I've got uh, one and one third minus the absolute value of 2y plus 1, absolute value of 2y plus 1, if y equals minus 2 thirds. All right, so I'm going to substitute in this minus two-thirds for the y. And when I do, I'm going to rewrite this. So now I've got one and one-third minus the absolute value of two times minus two-thirds plus one. Oh, well, that's a nasty-looking plus sign, but we'll deal with it. Okay, so again, I got this absolute value symbol represents a grouping. Let me get that parentheses right there. And, um, and so I'm going to now multiply. First thing I'm going to do within that absolute value expression is I'm going to multiply. Can't write today. Um, two times minus two thirds. And uh, of course, when I do, I'm multiplying numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. The denominator in this two right here, I could actually look at that as two over one. And so now that's going to give me minus four thirds plus one. Absolute value of minus four thirds plus one. And so adding and subtracting uh, from left to right inside this uh, absolute value symbol. Again, the absolute value symbol represented right here. These two parallel lines tells us this absolute value. And so I've got one and one third minus, and when I, uh, when I add minus four thirds to one, that's going to give me the absolute value of minus one third. Now, so I've got this um, absolute value of minus one third here, but 
But remember, when it comes out of that absolute value, let me just rewrite this again. So I got one and one third minus the absolute value of minus one third. But when I bring that outside uh, the absolute value symbol, that's actually going to be a positive. But look, I got this. I've got this minus sign here. Okay. So even when I bring this out, I've got the one and one third. I'm bringing it out as a positive, but it's telling me to subtract that number from one and one third. So I'm bringing it out as a positive, but I've got I'm bringing it out as a positive, but I got this negative sign that I've got to uh, keep in this uh, this expression. So now here I've got uh, minus one and one third minus one third, and uh, so as I evaluate this expression. It is, in fact, just one. Okay, so let's move forward, and now let's solve an absolute value equation. So let's say we have got 8 equals the absolute value of y plus 5. Now, in order to actually solve an absolute value equation, I've got to set this to two separate equations because remember, whatever's inside this absolute value symbol, inside of that, that could be a positive or a negative number. It's only when it comes outside does it become a, uh, can it only be a positive number. So I'm going to set this up uh, to solve this in two separate equations, as you're going to see here. So I would first set it up as 8 equals y plus 5. And over here, I'm going to set this up as minus 8. I'm going to compensate for the fact that it could be a negative inside the absolute value equation. That's how I'm going to do that. y plus 5. Okay? Now, let me work on this one on the left first. All right, I got 8 equals y plus 5. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. And when I do, I've got 3 equals y. Now, on this second one, where I've got minus 8 equals y plus 5, again, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. But this time when I do, I've got minus 8 minus 5. Well, minus 8 minus 5 is going to give me minus 13 equals y. And so here I actually, what I have is two possible solutions. Now, what I need to do is go back in here and check to see if this is going to work. So I can take this 3 and I can substitute it back in here for y. Okay, and so if I did, I've got 3 plus 5 equals 8. Well, the absolute value of 8, of course, is 8, and 8 is going to equal 8. And so 3 is, in fact, a possible solution. Let's look at this second one. Now, in the second one, I'm saying that y is equal to minus 13. So, again, I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to plug this minus 13 in for y. And so, minus 13 plus 5 is going to give me minus 8. But, again, I'm talking about the absolute value of minus 8. And the absolute value of minus 8 is, in fact, just 8. And, again, 8 will equal 8. And so... The uh, minus 13 is also a possible solution. Both of those work. Both solutions, both where y is equal to 3 and y is equal to minus 13, both of those come up with a true statement that the absolute value of y plus 5 is equal to 8. Now, before we proceed on this next example, um, let me just say that in mathematics, mathematics, uh, one of the terms of mathematics is constraint, a constraint. And a constraint is a condition that a solution must satisfy. And equations are viewed as a constraint in a problem situation. So the solutions of the equation must meet the constraints of the problem. And so what that means is, is that when I try to solve the equation, it must be true because that equal sign is a, is a constraint. If it, if it does not equal, if I can't make it equal, uh, then it, I would have a situation where uh, I don't have an answer, and we can call that an extraneous solution, or we might say that it's no solution. And of course, if you can tell from the title of this slide, we're going to be looking at one 
that is no solution. So let's do that. Let's say I've got minus two times the absolute value of three A equals six. All right, so the first thing I could actually do, because again, this absolute value system is sign is like a grouping. And uh, rather than maybe set two equations, what I'm gonna do first here is I'm just going to divide both sides by minus two. As long as I do to one side of the equation, as long as I do it to the other side of the equation, that's actually a uh, permissible or legal move. And so here, my minus twos cancel. And when I divide six by minus two, I'm going to get minus three. So now I've come down and I've got now the absolute value of three A equals minus three. Well, I can just stop right here. I don't have to go any further because I know that whatever comes outside this absolute value symbol, whatever comes outside of it, has got to be a positive number. It's got to be a positive number. It cannot be a negative number once it comes out from underneath these absolute value symbols, these two little parallel lines. Well, absolute value of 3a cannot equal minus three. And so I can just now simply say that this is no solution, no solution to this equation, nothing, no what matter what number I plug in for a, it's not gonna work because whatever's inside this absolute value symbol cannot come out of it and equal minus three. So it's got a no solution, or I could represent this as a zero with a line through it, which means that there is no set. In other words, there is no number that's gonna satisfy the constraint, the constraint of that equal sign right there, to where the absolute value of three A is equal to minus three. Okay, let's look at one more. We're going to see if there's no solution or not. You maybe could second guess from the slide. That's probably going to be the case. But let's say I've got an, ex uh, an equation that says the absolute value of 4B plus 1. Absolute value of that plus 8 equals 0. Well, I'm going to evaluate this. And I'm going to start by subtracting eight from both sides. So I've got four B. Remember in an equation, when I'm solving an equation, I work the uh, order of operations backwards. So I've got a, uh, the absolute value of four B plus one plus eight. Well, if I'm working that backwards, I'm going to add or subtract from left to right as my first step. And so here I'm going to take this positive 8, I'm going to subtract it from both sides, and I'm going to end up with 4B, absolute value 4B plus 1, equals minus 8. And just like what I saw in, the, in this previous slide, well, I can stop. I know that this is going to be no solution because I still got my expression inside the absolute value symbol. I don't even have to solve it any further because I know that whatever comes outside of there cannot equal negative eight. It's got to equal a positive number. And so again, there's not any number in the world that I can plug in for B uh, inside this absolute value symbol uh, and, and, and try to solve that that's gonna give me a negative number because it can't be a negative number coming outside the absolute value. And so it's no solution, no set, boom, done. Okay, so we've been, as we've been look, evaluating or solving absolute value equations, we've seen that we can have two possible solutions. We've also seen situations where we have no solution, nothing's going to work. And so as you might guess from this slide, we're now going to look to see situations where we might in fact only have one solution. So again, I'm going to try to write a little bit smaller because this is a long problem. In fact, I'll probably have to put it over two slides. Okay, so I got two times the absolute value of x plus one minus x equals three x minus four. Okay, so I'm gonna solve this, I'm gonna, but in order to solve this, I'm taking the order of operations, I'm working backwards, taking the last one first. So the last one's add or subtract from both sides. I've got this minus x over here, and um, I'm going to add it to both sides. So. I've got two times x plus one. Now, yep, absolute value of two times, two times the absolute value of x plus one. And so now I have four uh, x, add x to both sides, it's gonna give me four x minus four. 
Second step, order of operations working back forward is multiply or divide both sides of the equation. So I see here I can divide both sides of this by two. My twos over here are going to cancel. That's just going to leave me with absolute value of x plus one, now equaling two x minus four. Because I divide two into a four x, I'm going to be left with two x. I divide two into minus four, I'm going to have minus two. So that should say minus two. Let's just rewrite that, two x minus two. Okay, now I'm going to set these up into two separate equations like we did before. I'm going to bring this uh, absolute value symbol. I'm going to take x plus 1 out from under it. And so my first equation I'm going to try to solve is x plus 1 equals 2x minus 2. And I'm going to go ahead and set this second equation up over here where I've got x plus 1 equals minus 2x minus 2. Okay, let's work here on the one on the bottom left first. I'm trying to isolate the x, and I'm going to first start by subtracting 1 from both sides, and when I do, I'm going to have x equals 2x minus 3. Now I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and when I do, I'm going to have minus x equals minus 3. And with this minus x, that really is the same as minus 1x equals minus 3. I can divide both sides by minus 1, and I will end up with, I'm going to put it right here, x is equal to just 3. Okay? Now I'm ready for the second side. Ah, so here I've got x plus 1 equals uh, minus 2x minus 2. And so the first thing I'm going to do is distribute this minus, which is really a minus 1. Uh, and when I distribute that, I'm going to be with x plus 1 equals minus 2x plus 2. So now I'm ready to subtract 1 from both sides because I'm going to start moving my x's all over, my constants all over on one side, and constants on the left. And so here I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and I got x equals minus 2x minus 1. And now I'm going to add 2x to both sides to get all my x's over here on the left. And when I do, I've got 3x is equal to minus 1. Last step here to determine whether, it's, so I can begin to start determining whether this is a possible solution, I'm left here with x equals minus 1 third. Now, I've got to go in here and drop in a 3 for all these x's on one side to see if that's going to, saw, it's going to be a true statement. And then I'm also going to have to drop in this minus 1 third to see if it's a, a true statement, to see if either or both or just one of these is actually a possible solution. Okay, so now we're ready to see if either of those uh, that we saw before is a possible solution. So let's go back to our original equation. 2 times x plus 1 minus x equals 3x minus 4. Now remember, I had two possible solutions over there. One of those is that x would equal 3, and the other is that x would equal minus 1 third. So let's first start here by drop, let's substitute in the 3 for all the x's. We're going to see if it works. So I now have 2 times the absolute value of 3 plus 1 minus 3 equals 3 times 3 minus 4. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so I'm going to start, start solving here inside the grouping symbol. So now I've got 2 times, I'm going to go ahead and 3 plus 1 is 4, minus 3, absolute value, 4, minus 3, equals, I'm going to go ahead and uh, multiply 3 times 3 is 9, minus 4, okay? Well, 2 times the absolute value of 4, which is going to be a positive 4, is 8. So now I've got 8 minus 3 equals, 9 minus 4 is 5. And 8 minus 3 is also 5, so 5 does, in fact, equal 5. 
And so I can safely say right now that X minus three is in fact a possible solution. So now let's look at this minus one third. Okay. So I take this, uh, I'm gonna go two times minus one third, minus one third plus one, absolute value of that, minus one third, oh, minus minus one third, minus minus one third, not to make a big mistake, equals three times minus one third, minus four. So I've substituted in this minus one third everywhere where there was an X. And so now I'm ready to start solving. I'm gonna go inside the absolute value here on the left side first. So minus one third plus one is two thirds. Okay, so absolute value two times absolute value of two thirds. And I got a minus minus one third. That's actually gonna make that one third. And we'll hold that for right now. I'm looking at three times minus one third. Well, that's gonna give me minus one minus four. Okay. All right, so the absolute value of two thirds is actually two thirds. And when I multiply two times that, I've got four thirds. Four thirds, two times two is four, one times three is three, plus one third equals, now over here I got minus five, minus one minus four is minus five. Four thirds plus one third gives me five thirds. Well, five thirds does not equal minus five. No matter how I cut it, five thirds is just one and two thirds. One and two thirds does not equal minus five and so i only have one solution that is three because one third does not work and my solution is just three